Hey guys, thought I would do a little bit of a follow-up video to my review for The Outsider. I said in my review I did enjoy it, I enjoyed the character development, I enjoyed the writing, I enjoyed the idea of a by-the-book, step-by-step police investigation of a supernatural entity, but I did say that the ending was very soft and it took far too long to get there, but I didn't really go into depth as to why I thought the ending was soft. And in this video, I'm basically going to explain to you what happened into it and just my thoughts on the whole process. The ninth episode ends on a goddamn fantastic cliffhanger, and I'm not just talking about the shot that Jack makes, I'm actually talking about it cuts to black and you hear him fire off nine more rounds. They all miss, somehow. As that episode ends, I was just, holy shit, that really makes me excited for the next episode. I did realize something, though, just before the episode started. I was like, wait a minute, they're in a forest. They're gonna have a shootout. Last time I saw an HBO show have a shootout in the forest, I was very, very disappointed. Ergo talking about the end of True Detective Season 2 and that really, really bad gunfight with Colin Farrell. A lot of people at the time thought I was wrong to say that. Kind of universally known that Season 2 was not well made. But anyways, back to the finale. They have this shootout, a bunch of them get killed. The lawyer gets killed, Holly's love interest gets killed, one of the FBI guy gets shot. Jack is just so losing it. He is so twisted with the manipulation from the creature and the alcohol and the snake and he gets bit by the snake and he comes down and he's just kill it and he blows his own brains out now all that's left is ralph holly claude and the fbi guy they keep those two outside while those two go in and it was at this point that we were all a little bit skeptical as to whether they could kill this thing or not holly does make the comment though as they're going down the stairs that even this thing needs to hold onto the bars it's afraid of falling so perhaps it's not as supernatural as we think it is and that is something that the show really never went into to aside from its ability to feed off of pain. I had this kind of assumption that while it could shift and change, it also had the ability to mentally destroy people. And we saw that with its manipulation of Jack, as well as the destruction of the families that are victims to its crimes. And then the few parts that we got to see of the Claude version of it, eating things, it had a horrifying sound. It didn't even show it. Like, they kept it in shadow. They built this thing up so well. And what happens when they find it? It's just Claude. At one point, he even kind of quick flashes in front of Holly, but he is far more interested in how she could accept him, that he would exist, as well as being able to convince other people that he existed. And that refers to what she says at the end of the episode where an outsider can understand and know an outsider. The only defense that the creature has is that if they shoot a gun, supposedly the cave will fall in and kill them all. But then what happens? Claude comes in and he blasts it with a shotgun. They all don't die, but the creature gets a spike through its chest and they think it's dead. But before he's shot, we never really know much about the creature other than what we've already established. He doesn't even say whether he knows that there's others like him. He says that he thinks he sensed other people like him, but he's not entirely sure. Not explaining things is a king trope. He likes to leave things unanswered, which admittedly sometimes that is a better narrative strategy, but there's a difference between not explaining it at all and just a little bit of seasoning. There's more explanation about what the clown creature is in it than there is in this about the outsider. But after they shoot it and the rock falls on it, they think it's dead and they start to leave. But then Ralph sees the ghost, so he goes back, firms that it's not dead, and he realizes that, you know what, there's no point in trying to prove anything. No one's gonna believe us, and those who will will just take you and they're going to do experiments on you and they're gonna use you as a military lab rat, so just smash your face in. Before he does that, obviously the creature changes its face and we see all these different entities that it's been in the past and then it smashes his face and that was about halfway through the episode and my dad and i were both going that's it what happens afterwards is them getting their story straight about what they now have to say is the truth to exonerate jason bateman as well as put this to rest but then in the very end of the episode after you see the credits which i didn't even know that hbo was Notorious for doing this. They did it like three times in Westworld season two ending. Holly is in the bathroom and she sees Jack as like kind of a PTSD sort of flash. At least that's what I thought it was. But then she's sitting on the bed and she starts to twirl her hair and stomping ground starts to play. This is the song that Ralph was talking about in the previous episode, having heard for the first time in 15 years, to which she kind of just added it up to coincidence. We're hearing the song again, but I didn't notice this the first time, but she actually has a scratch on her arm. And not only that, but the footage is going in reverse with her twirling her hair. I don't know what they're trying to do with this ending. I think Story has a pretty cool idea saying that this is the show really kind of pushing you, the viewer, to accept that sometimes things logically can't be explained, that sometimes things 
have to be accepted whether they seem real or not that's been sort of the kind of the basis of the entire show but it just feels like this build up to the confrontation there was so much build up to his relationship with jack there was so much build up to the creature itself and then it just kind of it just falls over. I don't feel like it executed its ending well, considering how long it took for us to get there. One person had a comment saying that this was essentially a high budget, really, really long X-Files episode, and I don't disagree with him. I like the idea of it, just the execution just didn't feel right with me. It didn't feel fully encompassing in its topic and its narrative material that we were given for so long. I kind of feel that this ending is a little bit of a cop-out. Obviously that's the whole point is that we are accepting things that sometimes don't follow the means of logic. The way that it's executed in this ending is just bizarre. It's not that it doesn't make sense, just doesn't fit right with what we've been shown, at least in my opinion. Anyways, those are my thoughts about the ending of The Outsider. What did you guys think? What do you guys think of this entire ending, the conclusion with the creature, and as well as the story with Holly and Ralph and all that? I think Ralph's story was well done. I think his ending was good. Holly's was a little bit odd. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. If you like this review, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.